Okay, Shiramalos. First one, 120. Okay, so we're, we're, the plan is going to be like this. Uh, as usual, we'll translate. Okay. Um, then I think we'll do maybe like just a, a little bit of intro into what Shir Hamalos are, but I actually have, Ken and I have not come up with a theory of what Shir Hamalos are yet because we just have done one. So we'll read what the Mepharshim say, just like the standard answers, and then we'll just put that on the back burner. And then what I want to do is get through the facts in terms of the Me'iri and then start theorizing and then like, you know, come up with an idea next time. Okay, so Shir Hamalos, how do you translate Shir Hamalos? Song of the Ascent. Okay, so there are two translations. The more common one that I've seen is a song of ascent, of the ascent. And the other one's the stairs. Yeah, okay, really? good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it really the, the corresponding to like the medium. Uh, that is the most common answer, yeah. Or because there's 15, oh, like it's 15. Because there's 15 steps, yeah. Yeah, okay. So that was just the intro. Uh, El Hashem Batsarasali Karasi Vaya Aneni. To Hashem in my, in my uh, sor, uh, Yeah, it's always hard to translate like, Sarah. I'm going to go with distress because I feel like that encompasses emotional and like external distress. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 sorry, but Sarasa Ali in, yeah, I, Plame Shah is, is uh, okay, uh, the Mepharshim, I'm going to say this later on. Apparently, when you insert a tav in a non grammatical way like that, it just means abundant. So it really is, but sar, but Sara Lee, but Sarasa means in my abundant distresses. Okay, that, that's what all the Mepharshim have said that I've read so far. Let's say my, my many distresses. Okay, Karasi? I called out. I called out. Vayanini. Okay. Well, what tense did you do that in? Uh, okay. So one way to say it is, uh, and he answered me. The other is, he will answer me. Okay. Uh, he will answer me. Uh, and both are acceptable here. Okay. And remember, when you're, especially when you're in Telling, you can play fast and loose with uh, with uh, tenses. Okay. But here, like the McCarthy actually did both of these. All right. Hashem. Hatsila nafsi misafas sheker. Save my soul from the lips of falsehood. Yeah, lips of falsehood. Uh, from, yeah, from words of trickery. Yeah, uh, let's just, well, I guess we'll, hold on a second. Let's take from it. Lips of trickery. Other one. A tongue. Tongue, tongue yeah. <laughs> I was going to say more than tongue. From a tongue of, and then I think deceit is the usually the uh, the, the translation of Rumiya. So we'll go with that unless we find otherwise. Ma yitain lacha, uma yosif lach lashon Rumiya. What is what does the tongue of deceit do for you, and what does it add? Yeah, okay. So there's two ways to translate this. One is well, I think you reacted funny the same because um of the what I was thinking. What what did you react funny? Uh, that's a weird way. Of, uh, there's something weird. About okay, so so yeah, yeah. Maybe this is what you're picking up. So I'll 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 write it the way Isaiah is saying it first. What um uh do, what benefit? Oh, sorry, what does it give you? What does it give you? And what does it add for you? Um, a tongue of deceit. Yeah. So that's one way to do it. So according to this, who do you think he's talking to? People yeah. who deceive him. Okay, right. The other way to uh, to do it. That was what you're thinking on. Oh, okay. Okay. So that I have not seen. Okay, that I've not seen. I mean, I see why he's thinking that because he's he's been talking to God. Here. That was why I reacted strangely. Okay, fine. I was I reacted strangely when I read this because it sounds like he's talking to the tongue. Like like it's a Shakespearean, like, like what does it give you? Uh what does it add to old tongue of deceit? You know, right? So there uh yeah. Could be either way. Could be either way, yeah. Uh yeah, right, right. Uh uh, but um one more poetic. <laughs> yeah. Um also I think it's gonna depend on or it's going to affect whether you hold that he's talking to these people in this tale or whether this is just talking to a sham slash monologue. Okay. All right. Um, chitze gibor shenunim im gachale rasamim. So chitzim are chitz, not half, arrows. arrows. Yeah. Nice. Okay, good. Oh, uh, this is the pasta. From what? Uh, is it? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Uh, arrows of yeah, and I I I I usually translate keeper a strong man here though. Um, I'm going to translate as warrior. Uh, I think that's more fitting because uh, strong men don't 
uh, we don't need to be strong to use arrows and probably not, you know, Shinunim. We need to be strong to pull it, but you don't need to be a strong man. Okay, fine. Strong, really okay, I mean, all right, I, I've done my archery in my yeah. camp uh, experiences. No, I'm talking about like, I'm talking about movies, like, not oh, yeah, movies, back then, yeah, you're right. I don't know back then. Like a long bow, yeah, you know, like a seven foot tall bow yeah, like a couple hundred pounds, but like, you know, okay, yeah, all right, I'm, I'm not the weapons expert here. All right, um, uh, no, it's like Vishina Tom Levanacha, sharpened, right? So, sharpened arrows of a warrior, sharpened arrows of a warrior. Im gachale rasami. Now, if anyone knows this, I'll be impressed. Sharpened arrows, or is that the arrows are sharpened? Im gachale rasami. Um, I think the plain shot is sharpened arrows. Right. Yeah, okay. sharpened arrows is one thing, and then with with uh, coals of coals. Yeah, coals of so rotem oh, wood um, is the uh, the thing that I've seen people say. So, what is rotem wood? Uh, I don't know. I've never seen rotem wood, so I'm not the rotem expert here. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll, we'll see, I guess, what, uh, what was it? The word rotem. Yeah. I don't know why, but that's what popped into my head. Yeah. I, the, only, the only experience... Uh, I know, I was going to say, the only experience I, I've had other than this parrot is that there was a... Uh, interesting. I, yeah, so there was a boy named rotem in Hafter, one, not one of my students, but when I taught there, and I was like, I don't know what that means, but that's definitely an Israeli name. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, you're going to name your kid after some sort of, like, feature of the land. Yeah, okay. Um, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll look up what that is later, okay? Um, uh, oh, so those are coals that are made from burning wood and what up Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was used as coals, okay. Oyali kigarti meshech shachanti im ohole kedar. It is a woe to me. Yeah, woe unto me. Yeah. Uh, ki garti meshach. Because I live well. I dwell. Yeah, dwelled. Okay, so here's Machlokas. Yeah, so this Machlokas, whether meshach is a proper noun or whether it is an adjective. Okay, so either means I have dwelled. Uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, so that would be the adjective. Okay, so either I've dwelled in meshach or... Uh, uh, f- dwelled uh, at length, right? Like for a long period of time. <laughs> um, uh, shachanti im ohle kedar. Uh, I, uh, I, yeah, another I word for dwelling. Resident yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right. Resident. Right. Right. I have resi- let's see, resided. Yeah. Resided with uh, in with uh, tents of kedar. Kedar. Everyone holds is a uh, proper noun. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Rabas. Shachna la, this is a hard grammatical one. Rabas shachna la nafshi. Increase the inhabitants to it. <laughs> okay, that's a pretty literal thing. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, uh, and soul? yeah. So, so yeah. So my, my soul, you kind of have to translate backwards. My soul has, dw- has uh, resided uh, at, length. at length. Okay. I don't know how the law. In yeah. In it, I guess. Okay. Yeah. In it. Im sone shalom. Yeah. Now, see, you did the same thing I did. You said haters plural, and so I actually went a whole day of learning this without realizing that it's singular. Okay. Yeah. But apparently, like, uh, that's the natural thing. I I saw Robert Alter say like, oh, there's some manuscripts that have plural, but okay, I kind of ignored him. Okay. So with um. We say like uh. Sone. Was, well, if you have a yud af- afterwards, oh, so oh, yeah, like I think you're reading it like it's with a yud uh, that's no. with a hater of peace, okay? And this is an epic line now. Ani shalom, I am peace, okay? Of uh, adaber, when I will speak. Yeah, but when I will speak, um, No, they, they are for war. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so before we even uh, start our initial um, questions and stuff, uh, what are just observations that you have about this? Uh... Well, a Oops. lot of war things. Okay, observation. I'm gonna actually. I usually don't take notes on observations, but I am this time. Okay, war things, right? Yeah, but also the deceit. Yeah, deceit things. Deceit things. It's also say... very. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No. Go ahead. It's just also very grammatically like disjointed. Yeah, yeah, uh, grammatically uh, disjointed. Uh, who's that actor? 
the old, I, I'm not a Star Trek person. William Shatner, like he talks in fragments, sentences. Oh. You know that that like they, I only know him from making fun of him on his Family Guy and stuff. But uh, yeah, like it, it it does feel it has that like disjointed, uh, not non uh, semant uh, non non syntactical uh, feel. What's the deal with where he was living. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What? Wh where was he living? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Not Why was it a what? It says it was a what. I guess. Yeah, and when? Yeah. For how long? Right. Yeah. It's not really an observation, but like something I was speaking about. Yeah. Like, do we know like, at what point in his life he wrote this? Like, yeah. What's going on? Right. Because you know, if someone ever talks about like when he was born, like, oh, no, uh, like, okay, good. So, so uh, when when did this? Uh, sorry. Yeah. When when did this happen? Slash. When did he write it? Yeah. yeah. Does this have to be about him? Or is no, it doesn't. Okay, that's a, that's a good call, right? Is this uh, uh, who who is the uh, the, the speaker? I guess we kind of are. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Observations. Questions. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, if we're going into questions, um, I don't know. You know, I'll, I'll make questions a separate thing. We we should do we should do justice to the questions. Okay. Questions and problems. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else? Yeah. What does this have to do with? It doesn't seem like I don't know where to share on all of this. Yeah. I right? I thought it would be okay. Good. Okay. Good. Yeah. So, so I, I, this is, I feel like this is not very songy, right? <laughs> you know, like uh, how, so, okay. Well, let, let's ask that as a general question. Like personal, like it's about the, or someone's problems. Not right. Like the, the what is a shir hamalos, and then like how is this a shir? Okay. What, what do you? I mean, with shir, do you have like a go-to like? Yes. Yes. Okay. I think I think I think tomorrow's like observation is like I think I think I feel like a shir would usually be a little bit more grammatically non-disjointed and if i kind of like it kind of just like flows it's like, oh, okay fine uh, okay so, so okay so so grammatically disjointed uh, uh i think a sheer can be like I, my sentence just then <laughs> but um yeah a little yoda yeah it, but you're saying uh aesthetically disjointed is not very song-like right meaning meaning songs don't talk normally like you don't talk normally in a song right yeah, yeah, yeah. but but it, it should flow and this one doesn't quite have a flow feeling it's kind of like all over the place like if yeah talk with like god and then like kind of stop talking about that and then, and then oh so thematically disjointed okay so yeah, let's okay yeah, yeah. let's go this. grammatically um there's got to be a a word for songingly cantorially i don't know uh grammatically yeah, aesthetically was good. Yeah, aesthetically, I I feel like aesthetically is a little broad. Aesthetically, and, and I, aesthetically, I think thought just meant like artistically. I don't know, thematically disjointed. Um, by the way, just fun fact. Uh, you can, I think you can fun fact. Yeah, you can have them lean in on the Torah. Uh, with the um Syrian trap. I don't know if tomorrow's gonna be able to hear this, but uh. Oh no, it's this right. Sound sound doesn't play with the thing. All right, whatever. But if you want to hear it's like person. it's person, yeah. Yeah. Just the ball. Yeah, yeah. You could do that on all of Al Torah. And so for, for Khumish, they have um Ashkenazi and uh and Syrian, but Ashkenazim don't know how to lean to him. Like that Masora was lost. So like I wasn't just saying that's Ashkenazic dig, but like yeah, you know, it's actually like lost. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um uh oh, so I was gonna ask what. So, okay, I, I was asking more, you were answering like the characteristics of a shir. I was asking in terms of when you see shir in Torah, like shiras hayam or shiras yeah. devor, shiras hazinu, yeah. what, is, what are shirim usually in your mind? Praise, praise uh -huh. right, right? This does not sound yeah. like praise. In fact, it, there's no praise in here at all, right? How would you characterize this as opposed to a sheva? A this is a bakasha, right? An observation yeah, yeah. So how is this a shir? Okay, meaning, uh, actually, let's split those into two questions, okay? Um, uh, like shear is usually, do you know how Unglis translates uh, a shear like the, the shear there? I know I've seen him translate shear multiple times, but no, I don't. Yeah, uh, actually, I, I was thinking I, I quoted the wrong line to you. Um, um, so he translates shira as yeah. tushpachta haden yeah. as a praise, right? So, like, that's just the straight up translation. Um, so let's uh just but, yeah. yeah i just noticed like why does three seems pretty out of place suffix three 
Yeah. Because that is the only like philosophical kind of statement that he's making. You know, yeah, that's true. He's making a request where he's talking about his woes. Okay, that's a good point. Right. Three and four, three, three and four, what right. four was the Charbonneros? Right. Yes. Uh, what? Uh, uh, so how do? How does Pasuk Gimel uh, and possibly Dalid fit in? Um, they seem like arguments, right? Um, whereas the rest of the parak is not. Parak is is not. Yeah. Um, about yeah. that, it is like the uh, two is also about deceit. It does seem like there's like. I'm not saying it's like not a question because of the, the structure of it, but it is doesn't doesn't just seem like it's an isolated thing. That's true, right? Right. I, I think um, Isaiah was more talking about the character of the statement, not the theme of the statement. Thematically, it definitely fits in with uh, with two. Where where would you do the pivot uh, if you see a pivot? Five, five uh, and on. You mean? Yeah, he was talking to Shem slash arguing for, now he's saying, "What would me?" Okay, so that you could say, the only problem is if you say that it's talking to Hashem, then you kind of lose that when you have three and oh, four. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I wouldn't say talk to Hashem. What do you say, Chaim? If you want to, you can. Um, but if there was a pivot, uh, I, I do think that this is also where I would put the pivot, but why? Yeah? Maybe I just don't know, like, the methodology, but... I don't know, like, just is it, does it have to be a pivot at all? Like, no, there doesn't. And that's that's been the question of, um, so far we found a pivot everywhere, but this could be the thing that topples the uh, the theory, you know, or shear models could just be some different sort of thing, you know? Um, well, this is so disjointed, it seems hard to yeah. say there's nothing like the pivot. Right. Uh, it's not a clean pivot, uh, no, right? So to me, this, uh, no, never mind. No, I, I saw a pivot here, but I don't really see it anymore. <laughs> uh, well, okay. I, 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 where do you want to divide the three? I, I think you're right with the three. Uh, one and two are one thing, three and four are another thing, and five and seven is a third. Okay, so I, I, uh, one is the Hashem part, yeah. right? Three and four is the... Um, I mean, actually, maybe you can even pivot in the middle. I know, I was thinking that also, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, it melds, right? It yeah. starts talking to Hashem, then goes into deceit. I think that's part, part of why intuitively I thought that one through four was one section, mm -hmm. right? Like there was one through four is Hashem save me from those who are deceitful. That's like yeah. the thing, right? And then um, five through the end, or five and six definitely seem to go together because it's talking about where you were residing, but then six and seven pair together because peace versus war. So it sounds like he is like living among people who are at war, you know? You could say like... The relationship between two through four is like Hashem saving from those who are deceitful, and because deceit has these problems with it. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to say it. It's that, so that, and that's why it's an argument then, because he's giving Hashem an argument for why. Yeah, four, although he's not talking to Hashem. Four is just stumping me though. Yeah. So you know, let me give you some facts, right? Would that help with the stumping this? Or are you not ready for facts I yet? Think they're also thinking. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. Uh, let, I, I, like I said, I, I kind of want to get um, the facts tonight. So if we have more questions, we can add questions. First thing I want to do is just show you the Targum really quickly. And I don't know if this has always been here and I just never noticed it, or if this is new. Altor has an English translation of the Targum on, um, on we, they had Uncle for a while, but a Targum on, on uh, Tehillim, okay? And what they do is they italicize the things that are different which is very easy for us. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, read it in the English until I see a reason to not. Um, so he says, a song that was uttered on, okay, <laughs> that was uttered on the ascent of the abyss. Okay, this is referring to um, a, uh, a midrash, which is, uh, I had not heard of this. You, hear, you know what abyss, abyss is talking about? Uh, oh, like a, it's a, it's a thing? No. Maybe like what we saw, like I should not descend into the pit. Uh, no, not that either. So okay, so what, what do you associate? Uh, this is to home, like, oh, that's like, version. yeah. So, what was the to home? Uh, okay. it was the waters, okay. yeah. Okay, right to home, or, or Noah is another one. There's a call my own to home. Yeah, all yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. So, I'll, I'll tell you the midras like ball pad really quickly, but I have not worked on this yet. Uh, when David was digging the foundations for the base of Nikdash, which apparently he did, I don't know if it's in the, oh, yeah, like the original waters or something. Yeah. So like, like the waters that were there threatened to, um, uh, flood the world. 
Okay, so something, something, something like writing the name of God on something and throwing it in an Achitofel or something, all the waters went down 1600 Amos or something like that. And then he realized, oh, that's going to be bad for the fertility of the earth because apparently you need water, like some groundwater, you know, aquifers or whatever. So he said 15 Shiramalos and each Shiramalos raised it up 1000 Amos and then he stopped it 1000 Amos from like the top of the, uh, the, uh, the the surface of the earth, wow. and so that that's what he's alluding to here. That it was a song that was said over the abyss to make it come up. No clue what's going on there. Okay, okay. that's how Achitofel died. Also, I think. yes, he didn't give him God's name at first. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. That's I just read that this morning. Yeah, what was it? He was a chacham, right? He was a chacham. I think he was David's rebbe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But then he became a rasha. Yeah. And then David cursed him to prove that, like, a uh, curse of a tzaddik will stay even if he wants to switch. Uh-huh. Something Interesting. <laughs> yeah. All right. Maybe someday we'll go into that. Okay. So uh, in the presence of the Lord, when I was in distress, I prayed and he received my prayer. So this is a very common thing. Uh, the Targum translates vaya aneni as the kabel tzlosi. He received my, my prayer. I have a whole theory about what it means for prayer to be answered based on the Targum uh, uh, that I gave. Uh, this is not a recorded here. I gave this as a Friday night Devar Torah once. Uh, so maybe that's for another tefillah here. Okay. Oh, Lord, deliver my soul from lips of deceit from a deceptive tongue. Okay. So that's um, just a straight translation. Okay. Now here's what he does. He inserts people. What does he give to you, O oh slanderer? And what does he add to you, O oh defamer, deceptive tongue? So he, I think here is being the tongue itself. Okay. Um, so he's saying basically like, what do you get, O oh slanderer, from a deceptive tongue? What do you get, O oh slanderer, from a defamer? All right. Um, uh, Malshina, we know from like La Malshinim, is people who are who like slander. slander yeah. And then um, Ochil Kurtzi is the, uh, which means someone who eats winks. <laughs> okay. That's the. Uh, it sounds like flattery almost. Yeah. Right. Someone who's recipient of flattering. But, um, but Rosh, uh, sorry, the uh, Targum Onkelos is translates this. Translates lo selech rachil belnacha is like don't eat kurtzin. Okay, so plain shot is like you signal. Like not plain shot. <laughs> plain shot of that Aramaic targum is that pe- people who are involved in lashon will often like like use signals to each other. Like they'll roll their eyes. Or they'll be like you know like that. You know, Rashi gives this weird interpretation that kurtzin was a type of delicacy that you would offer to people who would come in and like gossip in your house kind of like like uh like um what was that oh yeah yeah like um like yeah tea parties in britain or like uh like uh mimosas in like the hamptons or whatever that you know like some sort of thing that people had when they were gonna uh, gonna gossip I, I know where that phrase i mean i've seen that phrase online i don't know where it comes from though maybe it's where maybe it's like could be gossip yeah yeah <laughs> the arrows of a warrior sharp as lightning from above with coals of broom broom wood is another way that they translate it uh that burn in gehenna below okay so um i think what he's getting at here like what's making him insert lightning from above and burning gehenna below punishment right so i think he's trying to make it divine punishment right burning them from below and like lighting from above as opposed to if you just look at the puzzle plain shot is describing the harm of a uh, false tongue right mm-hmm. okay um woe is me for i've settled down with the oasis dwellers okay and the footnote says translation uncertain <laughs> okay uh what does it say im osae oh so ken and i theorize um that or maybe I theorize and Ken agreed that it's a good theory, uh, uh, that I think Asia was used back then for Asia. Um, so that this is talking about some location in Asia, and then I have dwelt with the tents of the Arabs, uh, the Im Mishkaneh and Aravae. Okay, so it's like two groups of people. More than these, my soul abides with Edom. Edom? Okay, so he puts in Edom here. Uh, our passage is Oili Higarti Meshech. Um, so he translates uh, uh, Meshech as Edom, uh, the hater of peace. Okay. Um, I am peaceful, but uh, for I will pray, but they are for war. So he so translates, the, yeah? Edom thing was on Vav. Vav on Vav. 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 Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Not Meshech. Correct. Sorry. I, I messed it up with, uh, I'm getting mixed up with what the Miri is going to say. Um, yeah. So he just adds in Edom here. <laughs> okay. Um, and then uh, he changes adaber. I, when I speak, he changes it to when I will pray. Okay. 
and I think what that does is who, who did you assume that he was speaking to when he says, when I speak there for war? Uh, who's Tongue of the Sea? The, who he's speaking about it to. Who's he speaking to? Oh. Yeah, I think the enemies, right? It sounds like he's like, I try talking to them and then they just are for war. Oh. But here, uh, the Targum is saying, when I talk to God, then they are for war, uh -huh. which is also a little, a little weird. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, it is. Weird. Yeah. Because especially because the uh, whole thing by Yaakov, by one of the, like, there were two separate things, one was praying and one was preparing for war. Yeah. Not like, Right. Well, also, it makes it sound like like if it's uh, I speak with them and they are for war, then there's an interaction going on. But if it's I speak to Hashem and they are for war, what the, the, the connection between the two halves of the puzzle is less clear. Yeah. Okay. Or well, they yeah. They are the speakings that he's doing to God. The, when I when I when I pray, it is or uh, success in war or something along those lines. Well, the they sounds like it's talking about <laughs> like... <laughs> no, it's V'chiyah Daber. I think it's V'chiyah Daber. Let's check it out. Yeah, V'chiyah Daber. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, do we want to try uh, theorizing before we do the Me'iri? The problem is the Me'iri gives us facts, but also theories, which is a great problem to have. But... um. Uh, or should like no, no, do we want to like get try to get through all the facts tonight and then like work on it next time? Or do you want you have any ideas now? I personally advise going to the Meiri, but um I don't have much in the way of idea. It'll probably take me a while to sit Okay, so let, let's go through the facts of the Meiri first. Okay. So here's the Meiri, and that is in your packet. Uh so the Meiri says, and he's gonna give us a little bit about the Shira Malas thing, but again, we're not gonna dwell on that this time. Shira Malas El Shambh Saras Lee Begomer. Inyan Hamalos, in Biadi Khadish Bahem Davar. I can't add any chidushim to this. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to quote the other mafarshim. Okay. Uh, some explain, as you know, the, uh, I guess, uh, blueprint of the base of Mikdash was, was given to David uh, in prophecy. Uh, this is in Diver Hayamim, which no one learns. Um, the uh, the writing was from the, everything in writing was from Hashem. Uh, he made me comprehend. Okay, so I guess that's I don't know whose interpretation this is, but that he definitely got a nevuah for what the mikdash would look like. This footnote says uh, Rashi and the Radak. Mm, okay. Did you know the Radak was a one line deal? Yeah, um, I but that doesn't mean that they won't uh, uh, quote uh, Chazal. In other words, I think this is I don't think. I think this fact must come from the way that Divrei Yamim is interpreted. Oh, no, but, but as we, far as like David having a versus Ruch HaKodesh. Yeah, that doesn't have to do with whether you're my, my mind. Well, Ramam Shita is that David didn't have yeah. Nebua, Um, But that my, being Maimonidean has to do with more how you think about the world. You know, it doesn't mean you agree with yeah. Ramam on everything, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, Chas v'shalom, that anyone would, uh, would just devote themselves to being a Maimonidean uh, to yeah, agree with Ron. I'll put it here for that process to mean that came from ideas. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Right. Although it sounds like, um, you mean just the puzzle on its own? Yeah. 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 Haskil yeah. sounds like ideas, right? Yeah. yeah. Although Biksav Miyad Hashem is a little more specific. Yeah. Okay. But here's the point. V'chibar chamesh esrei mizmorim elu shiyu halavim zamrim b'tesva malo shai b'har abayis. So very specific here. So there were 15 Mizmorim uh, corresponding to the, 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 the Levim would sing on the 15 steps on Harabais that went from the Ezra Nashim to the Ezra Israel. If and when we work on this, we can look at the maps. I don't want to do that right now. Uh, each one was a Chati Ama. Mizmor Echad Bama'ala. Next page. Bama'ala Achas. One Mizmor for each step. Okay. So that's like, like, the song of steps. Okay, right. All right. V'yesh mafarshim shapirshu shirim. Okay, some say it means like the the. Uh, I don't know why he has to say shirim, but you'll see what he means. Shehayu mishorim osam tchila b'kol namuch. They would sing it at first with a a low voice, a quiet voice. Umalim osam ad maad, and they would uh, they would raise it a little, little by little. Ad shihi hakol gavoh maod until they were very loud. Okay, so. Um, Anyone know the music word for when you crescendo? So the song of crescendos, 
okay, is, uh, is what he would be calling it here. And that's cytogon, okay? So you can think about this in the back of your mind, like why would you need different steps for each of the, um, sorry, songs for each of the steps? Uh, what would be the idea of starting quiet and then like getting louder? Yeah, that's that's why Ken and I didn't work on this. Yeah. That is interesting though. It could mean that there's like some ascension of the idea is also. Yeah, right, right. I mean, we already have some ideas like that from Paragraph 150, you know. Uh, one more interpretation. I didn't go through all of them, but this one uh, uh, drew me in. The Miuchas Larash Bam says, Lefi Pshuto Ba'aliasan Larego be made David Shlomo. So that these were Shihamalos of Ali Larego. Okay, uh, during David and Shlomo, Bain Mikdash Rishon, uh, Lashani, between, I think he means whether in the first Mikdash or the second Mikdash, Hayo Osin Shir Al Osan Alios. They would make a Shir when they did these Aliyah the Regal, Alios the Regal. Mikanda Elach Hayo Omrim Oso Bucho Ace Bevesa Mikdash. And then after that, they would say it in the Base Mikdash. Vish Mehem Shanasu Ba Alios Ezra Vesiato Mi Bavel. Some of these were said when Ezra and his group went up from Bavel, like to resettle uh, the land. Okay, fine. All right, but let's get into the actual thing. Okay, the Kavanas is Morim. Okay, here he comes, uh, nice Miri giving us the theory. Okay. Um, oh, and also the reason, I'm not saying this like um, uh, in a degrading way, just but just to like a word to the uh, word of warning. We tried learning according to the Radak, and the Radak was uncharacteristically unhelpful uh, in the sense that he was very sparse in his commentary, didn't really give many ideas. So the Miri ended up being. Much more fruitful. Yeah. Not that you need a reason to go to the Miri, but just this is why we're not doing the Radak when we usually do it. But Kavanas and Mizmorim, the intent in all of these Mizmorim, meaning all the Shiramalos, Rubam Ne'emorim al Tsaras Hagalios, Unavuas Hagulamehem. The majority of them are said about the distresses of the exiles and the prophecy of redemption from them. The Koshkin al Zeh Hagalos Arach. And Koshkin about this long Galos, the one that we're in right now, which is called Galos. Edom, yeah, okay, good. All right, uh, that's gonna that's foreshadowing. Umehem al tsarosav shall David. Some of them are about the tsaros of David himself, val bitchono bakel yisale, and about his trust in God. Afal pishim meshamshim al lashon bnei hagalos bitchono bakel. Even though they are written in the voice of the bnei galos and trust in God, so we've seen the opposite of this. We've seen things which sound like David talking about his personal stuff, but really it's. It's all. It's about all of Kla Yisrael, and he's speaking because he's the uh, king. Mm -hmm. uh, but this would be that it, he's talking about his own personal troubles, but he's speaking as though he is the Jewish people. Okay, or this is just about the Jewish people. Okay, so as we read this, Meiri is going to explain it in both ways about David personally and about the Galus. Okay, he's going to give us a nice like uh, uh, two options. Okay, this one goes both ways. It's on either himself or on the Gullus. And he says, At the time of my Ani I call him. And he answers me. Oh, or it's past tense. So either he is saying, uh, I called out and he answered me past tense, or I call out and he answers me in present. Okay. Um, uh, and so that's why I meant you can play around with the tenses. Okay. Uvat sarasa hatav yasera onemar. So the tav is either extra just for like poetic reasons or nemar kain la rov tsara, or it's talking about like abundant tsara. Bechin yeshua sa is a rov yeshua. Okay, fine. I mentioned that. Usfa sheker of lashon ramia nemar ahasonim hamisnaklim. So um, what was the term you guys were looking at? Mechapsim alilos. Right on uh, Sunday, yeah. So these are the people who are enemies, who are hamisnakling, who are like plotting, okay, against either the Jews or against David. Oh yeah, Allah about David or al bnei hagalos, or about the bnei hagalos, the sifse halakos with with smooth talk, okay, or like like a uh, sly talking. Okay, now is this reminding anyone of anything? <laughs> Didn't we just do a parak about this? with David and Melech, uh, having to defend himself against the people who were like conspiring against him through deceit. So that, that would be one case. But if this is about the Jewish people, what do you think, what kind of thing do you, th you think this is talking about? Of uh, people like, um, uh, you know, plotting against the Jews with false right. tongues. What, what, what example has come to mind? Oh, well, I guess like the, the Karaites kind of. Okay, well, that would be more like trying to, um, uh, pervert the, Mas right. the Masora. This is in Gullus, the enemies that are plotting against us with falsehood. I don't I wouldn't describe the that way. 
Yeah, but like what specific, let's have specific examples to work with here. Just because we talk about four traveling. Oh, libel yeah libel uh, right yeah. this is all the time throughout all of our history blood libels uh you know uh you know jews are baking the matzo with blood pro cause of the elders of zion you know they're killing christian babies they're starting the black plague right i, I think i don't think it's unreasonable to assume that this is the you know the uh uh the jews are against the king you know they're not loyal haman saying that they're scattered all over the nation so these are all lies that are told to create sorrow for the jewish people do you have examples like before by Douglas? Um, that we should be talking about? Possibly, but none that I know of because I don't really know um, Nevi'im Rishonim. Uh, like, oh, unless they join the other army. You think that was a lie? Oh. I, I thought that was genuine. I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, genuine or astrology. Okay, onward. Therefore, he says against the enemy, Who is forcing you to hide what's in your heart? To the point where you look like a, a friend. And in the end, you reveal your hatred. And your deception and your false tongue and your smooth talking is not benefiting you at all. Now, when Ken and I read this, we kind of paused here and thought like, what do you mean who's forcing you to do it? Like, like it works. Like, of course you're doing it because that's how you can cause trouble for the Jews. But then we read, you're not benefiting at all. That's like what the puzzle is getting at. What is it giving you? Meaning it's one thing if I like lie to you in order to like take advantage of you. But if I lie about you just to cause you harm, that's like a different level. And that's what he's saying to these people is you guys are just spreading like, you know, rumors about the Jews, or you're just like trying to take David down, not for any uh, toelas, not for any gain. And that's why he's asking, what is it giving you? Possible. Yeah. Uh, well, it's not possible psychologically in the sense of like, obviously, if you are causing someone harm, you're getting something out of it. But what it means is you're not getting, you know, uh, like, look, there, there were, like yeah, yeah, yeah you, there, there, there were situations where like, uh, you know, you could slander the Jews in order to, to uh, get them out of a certain job, you know, or to get money or to like, yeah, those are, those are things though, right? Yeah, those are benefits, right. So, so he's saying these guys are not doing it for that reason. They're doing it just to, because they hate the Jews. When, uh, here's the famous example, okay? When the Nazis were gonna lose the war, where do they devote their extra money to? Just like ramping up the, the killing of the Jews, right? Like it's just killing the Jews lishma. Like, you know, um, yeah. Uh, or, or when, you know, you don't need like, like it doesn't like just use examples that are not from the, the, the Jews. I mean, there are plenty of cases where like, people who are xenophobic against other people in various things will just do torturing, not because they're going to like get any benefit. They just, they, the torture is a cum, you know, like it's a, it's a thing. So that's what I was talking about. Um, Can I uh, ask like a question slash comment? Yeah. Um, so the examples that you gave, um, like the libel and, and these examples, um, it doesn't seem like they're so deceitful. I mean, they're, they're lies, but the Ad Shatira Kohe's element seems to not be there. Right. So, um, so it sounds, so why do you pretend that you're a friend if you're going to do this? Yeah, yeah. Lure them to a false sense of security, you know? So, so you're right in the libel example, uh, it, it's, you know, I actually jumped the gun by the way. Sorry. This, I forgot that this is talking about David. Okay. Then he says, That's really talking about the libels. Uh, hold on. Sorry. I, 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 I thought he only said one way. He says, If this is about the B'nai Galos, then this is talking about the people who make um, uh, elaborate plots constantly against us with words of falsehood and deceit, without uh, any benefit to them. They just want to harm us. So I think tomorrow that answers your question. The Nirik Ohev is really talking about David and people like pretending that they're his friend and then stabbing him in the back. But when it comes to the Gullus thing, then they don't necessarily pretend that they're friends. Chrissy. Yeah. Okay. Vikara Osam Chite Gibor Shenunim. Okay. So first I want to show you Alter's Parish, which uh, some of the Mepharshim say. I think... Um, uh, Radak says this, but Alter ha actually has it clear. Uh, he says, okay, oopsies. A warrior's honed arrows with broomwood coals. 
At first glance, I can't get this out of the way. At first glance, this seems to be a leap without transition, but in Solomon's malicious speech, a, is that? Oh, is character, sorry. This line may seem to be a leap without transition, but in Psalms, malicious speech is characteristically represented as a sharp arrow or a sword. Broomwood was known to burn hot for a long time, even when the surface of the coals had turned to ash. So the image of intense burning complements the image of piercing arrows. Okay, so that, that's his shot. Meiri says something similar, but with a different, um, uh, different emphasis. Uh, okay. Chite giboshinun umelutashim me'atmam. Um, sharpened uh, of themselves, v'yotzim gamkein miyad gibor, and they also come from a gibor. Shemimisim bechadus bloherges. They kill you with piercings without feeling it. Okay, so this is like uh, you know, apparently. So Ken was telling me this. Uh, uh, apparently, if you get stabbed with something that's sharp enough it's possible that you like don't feel it. And then you start realizing that you're like bleeding out. So I was like, is that really true? So then I Googled it, uh, hold on a second. Stabbed without knowing. No, I got this, um, uh, stabbed woman doesn't notice knife. I know we shouldn't laugh, but uh, this is a uh, March 20, uh, 20, 2000 uh, article. A 60 year old woman was stabbed Friday as she walked into a grocery store, but she didn't notice the knife sticking out of her back until she had gone shopping and returned home. No, so the woman whose name was not released apparently thought her attacker had only punched her. The police said no one in the store said anything to her, even though a surveillance camera showed the woman pushing a cart with a knife clearly visible. It, it, this could just be like an extreme version of if someone, you know, someone has something stuck in their teeth and like you don't want to tell them, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, or you actually, you you who this happened to, which I'm going to, I don't know if I need to uh, pause this, but um, Ken, Ken was telling me that there was, he read about this case where a guy in prison, you know, like a shank, like the, uh, he got shanked and also just didn't notice it until he like started bleeding out. You know, so uh, apparently it's a thing, right? Um, it's like the really famous Iron Man movie. I don't know where exactly it's from. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it's, it's exactly, it's very famous. It's where basically the line translates to you're already dead, but you don't even realize. And the guy goes, Nani? <laughs> <laughs> I think I've seen this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, I, I think I've seen that. Okay. Um, then he says, Vahosif od la demusam. He's also comparing them to Gachale Rasamim, to uh, Rotem Coles. They min etim shakorim lahem. Uh, Yin <laughs> So other coals, Kishakavim mi bahuts, Kavim mi When they are extinguished on the outside, that means they're extinguished on the inside. The Elu, but these, Kavim mi bahuts, Vadain dolkos mi bifim. They're extinguished on the outside, but they're still burning inside. Vahroe osam, and the guy who sees them, Yachshav, will think, Shehim kabos lagamre, he'll think that they're completely extinguished, Vahlokam, and he'll grab them, Ve'ino margish, and he won't sense them, Achu nichba them, until he gets burned by them. Right? So, what he's, what's the common quality he's bringing out here? Uh, you don't feel it until it harms you, right? So that's a good muscle for the um, lies, yeah. right? You're being lied to, and that's when the actual harm happens, but you don't feel it until it's like, lie. yeah, until until the harm uh, actually gets you. Yeah. Um, okay, we are at our stopping point, and this is also half the halfway mark in the thing. We have three more psukin left, uh, but we'll have to um, wait till uh, next time. Okay, so next time we'll review this. And then uh, finish the Meiri, and then and then theorize, and then try to wrap it up. Yeah. I think I know where I knew Gahalai or Sami from. Yeah. I think it was the surgery we were doing in Kiev a month ago. Oh, by ovens. By Shab. Yeah. Like, like, it, it was like a reference to like specific coals that like stay really hot. I think Washi. Yeah, I think Washi. Okay. Like okay, could be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Presumably, if they're going to be burning inside. And um, and uh, extinguish outside. That probably means that it insulates the heat really well, yeah, right? Yeah. We're, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like when you wrap the the food or something like that. Right, right. Yeah. All righty. Have a good night. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for coming. I'm glad you can make it tomorrow.